So good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again and we are going to talk about Granit Xhaka could potentially be staying at Arsenal and there's reports saying that we're actually asking for more money <laughs> if we're going to sell him. Uh, this is kind of baffling, I can't lie. We're going to get into all of that in a second. Uh, make sure you are smashing the like button up, people. That always helps the channel. Uh, big up to everybody who is subscribed and uh, the channel is flying at the moment on course for 85k. So if you haven't subbed, do it now and um, make sure you get your super chats and your comments in down below as well. Sub to the second channel. This close to 17,000 of you have subbed on that channel. So go and check out the video I just dropped on there about Pochettino, Chelsea, etc. etc. He's just started first day at Chelsea today. So go and check that video out and uh, share all the content around. Big up to all of you, by the way. The amount of shares in June was the most on this channel ever in a month. And uh, it doesn't tell me who shared it. But thank you very much to all of you that have. Uh, but yeah, loads, literally thousands of you have shared my content in the last 28, 30 days. So thank you very much. Do appreciate it. Uh, but there's a lot of reports doing the rounds over the last couple of days. And I thought I'll sit back on this for a little bit. <laughs> it looks like Granite Xhaka could be staying. And this is weird. I can't lie. Um, he posted out on his socials on the day that we played Wolves, the 28th of May, the last game of the season. He posted out on his socials, basically, it was a farewell. It was a goodbye. Thanks for the two charity shields. I'm not quite sure why you claim them. And um, thanks for the two FA Cups, blah, blah, blah. And um, then he was stopped by fans on um, outside the Tottenham pub. And they were, he was signing autographs and um, asked if he was going. And um, he said, we'll find out next week. Well, we're now six weeks down the road. And uh, he's still here. And there's a few reports doing the rounds suggesting that we're keeping him. And if we are going to get rid of him, the price was around 13 million, apparently, that we'd agreed a fee with Leverkusen for. I thought this was all but done. I thought we were just waiting until we got somebody in to replace him. Obviously, we signed um, Kai Havertz, which, phew, mad downgrade, I can't lie. Yeah, he is not as good as Granit Xhaka at all, in my opinion. I don't rate Granit Xhaka like that. But for me, this Granit Xhaka's got a bit of fight in him. Yeah, at least he'll get stuck in. Yeah, he might do dumb stuff every now and again. But he has kind of cut that out of his game, especially last season. He was really, really good last season. But <laughs> we're now apparently looking for 20 million. Now, I'm pretty sure he hasn't officially put pen to paper on that deal at Leverkusen. Yeah, like it would have been agreed in principle. So obviously Arsenal can pull out that deal if they want to. I'm not sure whether Granit Xhaka would be happy about that, but that remains to be seen. But... For me, this isn't as bad as it looks. Obviously, I don't want him here. But if the replacement is Kai Havertz, then we're not going to go and get anybody else in that position. Then why not keep him? Like, obviously, I don't want either of them in that position. I'd rather go and get the best of the best. Go and put Declan Rice there, for example, and then go and get Kai Sado to do the sixth position. But obviously, the club have got a different idea to me uh, and have done for a long time. Hence why they don't really win much. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. But for me, Granite Xhaka staying ain't as bad as, as it looks. But I'm still still kind of 50-50 with this because at the end of the day, we should be actively out there going and getting better players to start in the starting eleven. For me, Kai Havertz ain't better than Xhaka. But there are players out there, like I just said, Kai Sado, switch Rice into that position and then blah, blah, blah. But we were under the impression a couple of weeks ago that Xhaka was going, party could be going, and Rice and Havertz are going to be the two in midfield, which, again, I've said many times, upset so many people by it, eh, cry, um, that it's a mad downgrade. Thomas Partey is better than Declan Rice. I don't care how anyone tries to dress this up. Thomas Partey is better than Declan Rice. And I rate Declan Rice. I think he's a top player. But Partey's better. And, again, this comes back to, oh, he's better than Casemiro. He's better than Casemiro and Rodri. Well, why wasn't anyone saying that Rice was better than all of them? And this just makes me laugh. And this is what happens when we sign a new player. All of a sudden, the old player, it doesn't matter about him anymore. Yeah, you can go. Get out. See ya. Bye-bye. Go. And now all of a sudden, the new shiny toy yeah, is now the best in the world. And this is what pees me off with football fans. Like, It's literally like, oh, look, we've got a new player. So now we'll hype him up into oblivion. And then, and then and I'm going to say this as well. I'll cut myself off. But I'm going to say this. When we signed Nicola Pepe, everyone was hyped. Everyone was gassed. Everyone was like doing this. I'm, I absolutely rinsed out. I've done about 20 videos waiting for the announcement. <laughs> Put Pepe in the title every time. The views were mad because everyone was hyped. 
And the funny thing about it is, is now fast forward all this time later, everyone's just happy to rip Pepe's contract up. And this is why when people want to tell me and tell other people, just back the player, just back the player or well, back the player until you see that he's not good enough. And now you want to rip the contract up and you're cool with that. So you hype the player up into oblivion. It turns out and you falsely back this player lying through your teeth that this, I'm not just talking about Pepe, I'm talking about any player that flops. Yeah, you're going to back this player into oblivion. You're going to pretend that you rate him because it gets you traction online. You're not saying the truth. And then when it's convenient and it, the general consensus goes the other way, that the player's actually not good enough. Now, yeah, let's get rid of him. And this is why I do it the other way. I'm not just going to blindly back a footballer. Yeah, that footballer, Havertz in this case, has to come into this football club and show he is good enough to then get my back in. You don't just blindly back something on the hope that it's going to be good. That's not how it works. You have to see something to then get behind. I don't just go, oh, yes, I'm going to back Kai Havertz and he plays for Arsenal now. No. No, how about you do it, mate? And then we'll see. Yeah? Same with Ramsdale, same with Ben White, same with other players. At the end of the day, you come into this football club, you have to prove that you're good enough to play for this football club. I ain't just blindly backing anyone. You know, I've seen the very, very best. Some of them are standing right, right behind me. Yeah? So why do we blindly back footballers just to be part of the get-along gang so everything's positive? Why are so many people so so set on being so sickly toxic positive? Why do they want to force everybody to be positive? Just be positive. Give me something to be positive about, and I'll be positive. It's not dif difficult, is it? We ain't won a title for 19 years. We ain't won in Europe for 29 years, and we ain't won anything for three years. What's to be positive about? Oh, but we're getting progress. Progress don't equal trophies, mate. Yeah? Progress has not led to a trophy in three years. He won a trophy four FA Cups ago, and then since then, he's ripped up the whole team, spent 600-odd million quid, and we ain't won anything. So when we win something, I'll then back it. Prove that you're doing something and I'll back it. You don't just blindly back something. Yeah, and this is the same with footballers. You don't just blindly back a footballer that you don't particularly rate. But now he plays for your club. You now have to be sickly positive, toxic about it. Like, no, 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 no. It don't work like that for me. And if people got a problem with it, it's tough because I ain't changing. Yeah, Kai Havertz is not good enough for Arsenal, in my opinion, as it stands right now, Monday the 3rd of July. Yeah, Monday the 3rd of July or Tuesday the 3rd of July next year, it might turn out that he's actually been brilliant. And then I'll go, do you know what? You proved your point. You've proved that you're good enough now. Yeah, and this is why it's not such a bad thing that Granit Xhaka could be saying. But at the same time, I don't want either of them here. Granit Xhaka's proven over seven years he ain't good enough for Arsenal. One good season, don't eradicate the six before that. So go out there and get me something better than both. But the club ain't going to do that. So now we could be stuck with Xhaka and Havers. Now, if that is the case, yeah, Xhaka will be starting over Havers. That, that's not even a no, that's a no brainer for me, because number one, it's in his contract that he has to play a certain amount of games, and number two, he's a better player than Kai Havers. So he will be starting games if he stays. But that also makes me think that Thomas Partey is the one definitely leaving. So, yeah. That's kind of mad as well, because Thomas Party is better than Declan Rice. And are we going to go with Rice and Xhaka? That's still not great, is it? That's still not great. Declan Rice is a good player, but he's not Thomas Party, mate. I don't care what anyone says to me. It should be Declan Rice and Thomas Party starting. But it looks like we're going to get rid of Thomas Party. And listen, there may be many, many reasons why we're getting rid of Thomas Party. Maybe his age. Maybe the fact he disappeared for eight games. But if we're going down the route of disappeared for eight games when we needed him, well, the goalkeeper didn't cover himself in glory. And Saka ghosted. Saka got a new contract. Ramsdale got a new contract. But this guy, see you later. Make it make sense. Oh, but Lee is 30. Okay. And is he actually 30? Is Thomas Party actually 30? Let's have a look. Uh, he is actually 30. There you go. When was his birthday? His birthday was literally last month. <laughs> He's literally just turned 30 then. So... Why are we getting rid of him with two years left? Maybe this has got something to do with allegations. Uh, and we know that there's no extradition treaty in Saudi Arabia with England. So, yeah, maybe, maybe something could be happening there. But we, this is all speculation at this point. At the end of the day, Thomas Partey has still got two years left on his contract. And for me, he should be staying for at least one more year. One more year, keep him in the team, put Declan Rice next to him, then have Havertz as a backup call. Cool. 
but go and get me Caicedo as well, or go and get me Lavia. Yeah, because then you've got Rice, you've got Party. For me, that's solid. Then you can throw Lavia into the mix. Jorginho, don't rate you, but he's there anyway. And then you've got Kai Havertz as well. For me, that's a lot better than going with Havertz and Declan Rice plus Jorginho and Lavia. For me, that's that four that I've just said is weak compared to the first four. So, listen, I'm not ecstatic that Granite Xhaka could be staying. But at the same time, if it's the choice of Granite Xhaka starting or Kai Havertz starting, I'm picking Granite Xhaka every day and twice on Sunday because he is better in that position than Kai Havertz in that position. And it is what it is. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, leave it all in the comment section down below. Um, do you think he will stay? Like, or is this just Arsenal trying to get more money? Because it'd be crazy after he's kind of said his goodbyes, but indirectly said his goodbyes, that um, that he ends up staying. That'd be mad. Will he be staying against his will? He is obviously under contract, so he is our player. And if we don't want to sell him, we ain't selling him. It's as simple as that. But if he wants to go, keeping a player that wants to leave, yeah, is never a good idea. It is never a good idea. You get rid of the player that wants to leave. And if he wants to leave, get rid of him. Yeah, and that goes for every player, Thomas Party included. If he wants to go, go. Yeah, go out there and go and replace him with better players. Yeah, they're not the only two players on the planet. But for me, that too is better than Rice and Havertz. So if we are getting rid of both of them, we better have Sanka plus sleeve. Yeah, because otherwise that midfield has just got weaker. And when you go with Rice, um, Havertz and Martin Odegaard in the middle, sorry, that's going to get ploughed through quite a lot next season. And there's going to be games where we're going to get embarrassed. So for me, we've got to go out there and actively try and get some better players in. Listen, it's been a great start to the window. We've got three players pretty much over the line already. Havertz, uh, Timber and Rice, they're all but done. Um, but now we've got to go and do more because the players we've got leaving or potentially leaving are going to weaken the squad if we don't go and replace them. You know, and I don't just, like I've said many times, I don't just want three in, three out or five in, five out because you've actively not made the squad that much better. You've just replaced player for player. You have to go and get squad dev. You know, all this thin squad and all of this crap. And like the way people are hyping up Declan Rice, like he's the greatest DM in living history. He's not. He's not better than Thomas Party. Yeah, it should have been. Rice and Party. That's what we were under the impression we were getting. Then the bombshell comes out that Party could be leaving. So now, go and get me Kaiseido. And then Rice and Kaiseido, that is saying that I can go, wow, yeah, cool. Yeah, I think that would be a good duo. But again, I don't blindly back players. Yeah, you have to do it. And Declan Rice, as good as he is, and as much as I like him, it's a big, big pressure. 100 odd million quid. You're coming in with the biggest price tag in Arsenal's history the biggest price tag in British football history, you have to do it, mate. Yeah, and I don't want to see no three out of tens, no five out of ten. You have to perform every week. Yeah, and it's as simple as that. But listen, let me know your thoughts and all of that. Uh, leave it all in the comment section down below. And um, make sure you get your comments and uh, super chats in. Make sure you are smashing the like button. Sub to the channel. Come on, let's get this up to 85k ASAP. I want 100k by Christmas, and we're fully on the road to that. Uh, make sure you sub to the second channel as well. I want 25k by August, so... We've got a month to get six and a half K on that channel. So go and get that done. And uh, yeah, people, uh, we're out of here. Have a blessed day. I'm going to sit by the pool. Goodbye.